This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. More and more places will be opening up soon, including museums, and we see how Eckley Miners Village is getting ready to open their doors. Hi everyone, and thank you for watching. I'm Ken Carr with your local information. Luzerne County has a new elections director. Bob Morgan takes the position after being the deputy chief of staff for Pennsylvania 8th District United States Congressman Matt Cartwright. In a release, Luzerne County Manager David Pedry says interim elections director Andrea Hill did not apply for the position and did an exemplary job during her time in the role. The Lehigh Valley Health Network's COVID-19 vaccine scheduling hotline is now open seven days a week. This will help with the governor's goal of having everyone in phase 1A who wants the vaccine to at least be able to schedule an appointment by the end of the month. That means they may actually get the vaccine in April. If you are in phase 1A of the vaccine rollout, you can call 833-584-6283 Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. to schedule a vaccine appointment. You can also schedule an appointment when you're eligible with the My LVHN portal. Eckley Miners Village Museum is getting ready to reopen and they're getting ready to tell more stories about all different kinds of people who have called our area home. Here's Lisa Sugar with Eckley's site manager, Bodie Morin. We're very excited. It'll have been uh, 13 months since we uh, officially closed in March of um, March of 2020, um, and we will be opening on April 30th, uh, which will be a Friday. Um, and for the first couple of months, we're going to be open just Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, and then slowly, as the pandemic hopefully winds down, we will be adding more programming um, and adding more hours and adding more tours and activities. Um, but we're just thrilled to get back to work um, and opening our history and our heritage to uh, to people from our area than visitors from around the country. Uh, we'll be doing cleaning several times during the day, uh, desanitation, um, or I'm sorry, sanitation, and uh, you know, and then a lot of outdoor activities as well. So it should be safe, and uh, we're like I said, we're we're just thrilled to get back to work. You have a unique project now that is underway, and I was impressed when I saw this. It's called inviting you to share your stories as part of the We the Anthracite New Voices. What is all of this about? Because you're going to do it virtually, but then you'll eventually put it in the museum itself. So this is rather unique. Tell us about this project. Um, you know, since the museum's founding in 1975, we've been really focused on the industrial culture of anthracite coal mining. Um, the people that came here to work in the industry, the people that, um, who, whose families have been here for generations working in the industry. And it's really been a very, um, I don't want to say narrow, but it's been a very focused um, interpretation on certain parts, certain people from certain parts of the world that uh, have come to sort of dominate our region. Um, but there's been people that have lived here for thousands of years. There's people that have come here that weren't part, weren't directly part of the coal industry. Um, and then there's people that have been coming here recently. Um, and all of these people, the, the people whose ancestors have been here, the new people, the people whose families have been here for thousands of years, they all make up our culture. They all make up our community. So we want to start looking beyond what we normally look at and sort of expand our understanding of, the, um, of, the, of these other people, the people that aren't very well represented in the museum. That's a really cool idea because, yes, um, you know, we've always been synonymous. Whenever a, a magazine from out of the area, or, you know, writes about us, it's always about the coal industry, the coal industry. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's an important fact that you're bringing up that not everybody came for the mining industry. So this is really unique. So how do people get involved in this project? Who are you looking for and how do they take part in it? Starting off with the virtual program. Um, or virtual, we're going we're gonna to do surveys online. Um, and this is partially due to, the, um, due to the pandemic and partially because we want, we might, we, we're looking at new ways to reach people without having someone, without requiring somebody to come into the museum. So we have an initial survey that's up on our website, um, www.anthracitemuseum.org. Um, and on the front page, there'll be a link to the, um, to the exhibit. We are Anthracite New Voices. Um, and they'll be able to do an initial short survey. 
Um, and then the idea is that once we review these short initial surveys, that we will then follow up with uh, people that are interested uh, in doing a more in-depth story. So we want to understand um, people's histories, why they came here, how their, their group or their community um, was involved, how the industry, either active or inactive, um, impacted who they are. Um, and I want to mention too that it's not, we're not just looking at um, ethnic groups too. It could be, um, I mean, we are certainly looking at ethnic groups too, new populations, populations that have been here for a long time, and even populations that may have been removed, uh, you know, 300 years ago. Um, but it's also other groups too that may have had, that were, the, who people identified with that may have had a, um, have an, an impact with the, with the industry, LGBTQ. Uh, maybe people that have vision or other um, other uh, needs for accommodation, um, maybe they have, have stories to tell as well. You know, so if somebody goes to the museum and they don't see their group uh, represented, well, we want to hear from them. Today's news feature is brought to you by the Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott. Need to relax? Book a stay at our indoor pool and dry sauna. Call the Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott at 570-453-0300. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service on Wednesday. There's some showers in the morning, will be high in the 50s. Wednesday night, rain showers and possible snow showers low around 30 degrees. Thursday, snow showers in the morning, then partly sunny with a high in the 30s. Thursday night, mostly cloudy with a low around 20 degrees. Friday is mostly sunny with a high in the 30s. Friday night, mostly clear with a low in the 20s. Saturday is sunny with a high in the 40s. And Saturday night, partly cloudy with a low in the 30s. Now to the SSP-TV standard speaker scoreboard. MMI Baseball is now 2-0 on the season after a win over Notre Dame East Stroudsburg. North Schuylkill beat Minersville in the Rothermel tournament. Jake Hall had two singles and two stolen bases for the Spartans. In college baseball, Penn State Scranton beat Penn State Hazleton. Penn State Hazleton did sweep Penn State Scranton in softball. The Marion softball team opened the season with a win. Morgan Kelly struck out 19 batters in the victory for the Phillies. Coming up next, how to deal with bugs as the weather warms up. And in sports, we talk with three members of the MMI baseball team who are all ready for a big season in Freeland. And we have the SSP TV Spotlight segment. SSP TV News, what sends sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Robert A. Bob Bowder of Hazleton, the Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home will announce the arrangement. Joni Fury, 873 of Freeland, friends may call Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. at the McNulty Funeral Home. Andrew J. Herichek, age 91, of Hazelbrook. Services will be private under the Hoover Funeral Home. Walter Frederick Kunkel, age 92, of Hazelton. A funeral service will be held on Wednesday at 11 a.m. at the Philip J. Jeffries Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 9.30 to 11 a.m. at the Funeral Home. Mary Ann P. Lebrecht, age 61, of Eagle Rock. Mass will be held on Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. at St. Gabriel's Church. Friends may call Wednesday from 9 to 10.30 a.m. at the church. The John J. Pustai Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Edward John Tipper Pavlishin, age 72, of Brandon, Florida. No services have been announced. And Wayne T. Wagner, age 71, of Weatherly. Services will be private under the Philip J. Jeffries Funeral Home. Today's social and obituary report is brought to you by Harmon Funeral Homes and Crematory. Call 570-788-0977 or go to harmonfuneral.com.